Well, I know you're in a pinch, so this menu can be done in a snap. Lobster thermidor with mini mincemeat turnovers to start, chicken a la king with twice cooked new potatoes for your second course, and steak Diane and mint jellies for your main. Do you set your own jellies, dear? Yes. Good girl. <laughs> Recipe cards are on the counter there. Bon appetit! <laughs> Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we are examining the overcomplicated hyper 1950s three course feast from the first episode of WandaVision. Like so many recipes of the era, this one starts with a whole lot of butter, specifically in the form of butter puff pastry, which I think is going to be perfect for both the minced meat turnovers and volovance for the chicken a la king. If you want to see how to make your own puff pastry from scratch, click the link in the upper right hand corner right now. But you're probably better off buying this at the store and saving your energy for everything that is to come. So once you you have finished painstakingly making it from scratch or have just defrosted a couple sheets in the fridge, we're ready to get started. First up, the mint jellies that are confoundingly served with steak Diane. We're starting out by hydrating one packet or half an ounce of unflavored gelatin in one cup of cool water. While that hydrates, we're going to make a sort of savory mint syrup. Ugh. Combining half a cup each, water and white vinegar in a large saucepan, along with two tablespoons of sugar that we're covering and bringing to a simmer. Once a simmer has been reached, we're going to pop off the lid, give it a little tiny whisking to make sure that everything is dissolved, and add a big handful of fresh stalks of mint, which we're going to allow to steep for 10 minutes or until they look gross. Now we're going to pop in our hydrated gelatin, also gross, whisk that until it's fully dissolved, and add a couple drops of green food coloring, just so this stuff really, really reads as mint. Then we are dividing evenly into the aspic molds of our choice and refrigerating for at least four hours. Already, if you were trying to prepare this meal last minute like Wanda, you'd be in a lot of trouble. Next up, something that can be made ahead and chilled until ready to serve is the chicken a la king, which I was very surprised to find out is pretty much just chicken pot pie filling with the addition of some pickled peppers. So I'm browning up two large chicken breasts and a couple tablespoons of oil, wiping the pan clean, adding two tablespoons of butter, and sauteing eight ounces of white button mushrooms thinly sliced. But first, I'm lightly salting them, which is going to help draw out their moisture during their roughly eight minute cook time. Once the moisture has evaporated and they're starting to brown, I'm adding in one small chopped onion and a couple stalks of finely chopped celery, which I'm going to saute together for about three minutes. Then I'm adding an additional two tablespoons of unsalted butter, letting that melt, then sprinkling a quarter cup of all-purpose flour over everybody, mixing and cooking for about one minute until the raw flour smell has abated, then adding a quarter cup of dry white wine and slowly adding a little bit at a time two cups of high quality chicken stock. Adding a little bit at a time and stirring constantly is going to help prevent lumps. Then over medium high heat, we are bringing this guy up to a rolling simmer and adding the chicken back to the hot tub along with any accumulated juices. Then we're simmering together for seven to eight minutes until the chicken has cooked through and the sauce has thickened to your desired consistency, seasoning generously with kosher salt and freshly ground pepper. And then to cool things down before this guy heads into the fridge, we're going to add a half cup of frozen peas, as well as a third of a cup of thinly sliced triple peas, or uh, pickled pimento peppers, which we're also going to mix together with a quarter cup of heavy cream. And that's all there is to it. Like I said, very similar to a chicken pot pie filling. I don't know why I grew up hearing about chicken a la king all the time. I don't know what I expected, but here it is. Go ahead and fridge until ready to use. Next up, mini minced meat pies. Now, minced meat is a term usually attributed to a sweetened nut and fruit mixture, but being both a savory first course and 1950s New Jersey, I just can't imagine that that's what they were referring to. So I'm taking it at its more literal interpretation, minced meat. Removing the fat and connective tissue from about three pounds of chuck roast and using a heavy cleaver to thoroughly chop it into a coarse ground beef. Now I have no idea what would normally go in one of these turnovers in the 50s, but my mind almost immediately went to a sort of beef stew, so after browning the ground beef, I'm sauteing some diced carrot, onion, and celery for a good long while, like eight minutes. Adding one clove of chopped garlic and a tablespoon of tomato paste, sauteing those together for an additional minute just to kiss them with heat before deglazing with one cup of homemade beef broth. Adding our brown ground back to the tub and simmering together until the liquid has thickened and almost evaporated about 10 minutes. Then I'm gonna hit it with a little shake of dried oregano, a pinch of dried thyme, seasoned generously with kosher salt and freshly ground pepper, and I think a few generous glugs of worst chair sauce will sufficiently transport this stewy filling back in time. Now we just gotta let this cool completely and move on to the last element of this meal that we can make ahead of time, that being lobster thermidor. I've got four small lobster tails that I'm gonna boil for about five, six minutes before shocking in an ice bath to cease cooking. I know Wanda used 
whole lobsters, but as an appetizer, tails just work better. Once we've patted them dry using a sharp pair of shears, we're gonna snip out the thin membrane underneath the shell, thus liberating the meat, which we're gonna gently pop out and set aside, reserving the shell for presentation. Then we're gonna chop up the meat into little bite-sized pieces and turn it into a sort of lobster mac and cheese, sans mac, or cheese. Toss that into a bowl and refrigerate whilst we make the sauce. Into a large saucepan goes four tablespoons of unsalted butter, which we're gonna bring to a bubble over medium-high heat before adding one chopped shallot. Sweating for a couple minutes, adding four tablespoons of all-purpose flour, whisking and cooking for two to three minutes until the raw flour smell dissipates, and slowly adding one cup of whole milk, whisking into a smooth paste after each addition. This is gonna give us a thick bechamel sauce, which we're gonna make even thicker and richer by effectively turning it into a custard. Into a medium bowl goes one egg yolk and a half cup of heavy cream, which we're gonna whisk until smooth before tempering with a few tablespoons of hot bechamel, whisking constantly so that the egg does not scramble, repeating three to four times until the mixture is fully tempered and then adding it back to the pot, again whisking constantly and cooking over medium heat if necessary to thicken. Then we're adding a half teaspoon of mustard powder, an eighth teaspoon of cayenne pepper, one and a half teaspoons kosher salt, and a half teaspoon freshly cracked black pepper, whisking until homogenous and allowing to cool completely before adding about a half cup of this batshit crazy mixture to our lobster meat. Tossing it around to make sure that it's evenly coated and spooning it back into the lobster shells, almost like a twice-baked potato but with lobster. Then we're finishing things off with a generous pinch of shredded Gruyere cheese. Then these bad boys can be covered and fridged until you're ready to eat them, at which point you're going to broil them until lightly browned. Now we're getting down to the a la minute stuff. First we're grabbing about a third of our homemade puff pastry or one sheet of the store-bought stuff and rolling it out to about a one quarter inch thickness, which we are going to cut into volovon or darling little pastry cups. Now as you can see I started with a biscuit cutter that was too small so I switched to a big one and hopefully there's enough pastry left for me to cut out eight circles, which I'm going to place on a parchment lined baking sheet and using a slightly smaller biscuit cutter punching holes into half of them. Then I'm grabbing one large egg beaten together with one tablespoon of water, brushing the discs down with egg wash and placing the rings on top, giving everybody a generous brush down before plopping in the fridge for at least one hour. This will prevent the butter from melting too fast and leaking out of your pastry. Plus it's another opportunity to give these guys an extra egg brush down before heading into a 375 degree Fahrenheit oven for 20 to 25 minutes until puffed, light brown, and ready to receive our chicken a la king. Make sure you reserve the tops as snacks for the chef. Next, we're rolling out the remainder of our puff dough to one sixth of an inch, then using a ruler for precision, measuring it out into four and a half inch squares, which we're gonna place on a parchment lined baking sheet, brush two adjoining edges with beaten egg, fill with about two tablespoons of our minced meat filling and crimp shut with a fork. Brush down with a beaten egg, sprinkle with finishing salt, fridge for one hour, and bake at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 to 20 minutes until lightly golden brown and puffed. Next up, twice cooked new potatoes. I've got three pounds of new potatoes that I'm dropping into some boiling water. Then I'm boiling them for about 15 minutes or until the potatoes show no resistance when stabbed with a paring knife. I'm spreading them out on a rim baking sheet to cool, patting them dry, and then beginning to smash them. You want to smash them just enough so that they're flattened out, but not so much that they fall apart. Then I'm squirting them liberally with vegetable oil, giving them a generous pinch of kosher salt and a few enthusiastic twists of freshly ground black pepper, gently tossing them together to coat, spreading out evenly scattering some fresh thyme across the top and roasting at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 to 20 minutes, flipping halfway through until deeply golden brown and crisp. Next, our final dish of the day, Steak Diane. And even though I have some beautiful filet mignons here, this being the 1950s, they're gonna get pounded with this tenderizer, which is probably for the best because steaks of this era were probably cooked well past a muddy gray medium well. Once you are done a pounding, we're gonna season these with kosher salt and freshly ground black pepper on both sides because despite their mistreatment, they are still relatively thick. And we are headed over to the stovetop where we've got a couple tablespoons of vegetable oil preheating in a large stainless steel pan. In go the steaks and we're gonna sear them about two minutes per side. We just want a deep brown crust. Go ahead and set those aside and gracefully we've got some nice fond here out of which to make a delicious sauce. Into the pan goes two tablespoons of cold, unsalted butter in which we're going to saute one small minced shallot, about two to three minutes or until soft and lightly browned. And then folks back in the 1950s loved flambe, so we are adding one quarter cup of cognac, far away from the flame, allowing it to evaporate a little bit, and then bringing it back over to the stovetop, tipping it for ignition. <clears throat> I said ignition. Incendio. 
Flame on. All right, looks like I screwed that up. No big deal. We're adding a half cup of reduced concentrated beef broth, two teaspoons of horse Cheshire sauce, and two teaspoons of Dijon mustard, tiny whisking to combine, and bring to a simmer over medium heat for two to three minutes until it's slightly thickened. Then we're adding a few dashes of Tabasco and half a cup of heavy cream, tiny whisking to homogeneity before adding the steaks and their accumulated juices back to the pan. I think that finishing cooking the steaks in the sauce makes the steak Diane look really gross, but once again, it is period appropriate, so we are simmering in the sauce for about five minutes until the steaks are done. And with that, we are ready to plate up. We got our freshly broiled lobster tail with new potatoes. Shit, that's not how it goes. It's lobster thermidor with mini minced meat turnovers, garnished with smoked paprika and chopped parsley. Then it's chicken a la king spooned into our volavants, surrounded by new potatoes, and insanely enough, steak Diane with mint jelly. Now we just need one more thing for accuracy. There we go, thanks Wanda. Now we can sample the words prepared by Witchy Wanda and her robotic bow, Vision. Your dinner guests will swoon at the lobster's thermidor. Sorry, I'll stop that. The lobster thermidor is fine, but lobster covered in cheese is just conceptually gross. The mini minced meat turnovers are pretty good. Sort of like a gourmet beef stew hot pocket. The chicken a la king is pretty much chicken pot pie filling with spicy pickled peppers, so it's good. I dig it. And the twice cooked new potatoes are super duper crispy. And lastly, the steak Diane, which is cooked to Dick Van Dyke perfection, and it's okay, but it does taste very dated, like it was made with solid state machinery. Perhaps a big bite with our mint jelly will spruce things up a little bit. Eh, uh, no, that is really, truly gross. If you ask me, the next time you're in a dinner party pinch, you're better off serving them a big plate of black and white breakfast. Hmm, how very European.